listening to the Pharmacy Podcast Network. Welcome to Maternal Rx Podcast on the Pharmacy Podcast Network. I'm your host, Dr. Danielle Plummer, pharmacist and certified doula. I'm so thrilled to have my guest here today to talk about an incredibly personal and often sensitive topic that for almost all mothers is dismissed or even ignored, sex and pregnancy. Dr. A received her doctorate of pharmacy degree from the University of Rhode Island. With a passion for women's sexual health and wellness, she became a certified sex therapist with the Sex Therapy Institute of West Palm Beach, Florida. She combined her extensive pharmacy background with this training and now serves as a sexual health coach. She specializes in hormone replacement therapy, peri-postmenopause, endometriosis, and medications for low libido, and today, pregnancy and sexual health. She, her goal is to educate and help people gain clarity on their sex life, overcome barriers, and improve self-confidence. Let's hear what Dr. A has to say about sexual health and the joy and connection between partners throughout the pregnancy journey. Dr. A, thank you so much. Tell me about Hi. yourself. Thanks so much for having me. What a beautiful intro. Thank you so much. <laughs> it's my uh, pleasure. Yeah. So um, I had a uh, a pharmacy degree. And I'll pause that with the dog barking because, of course, she does that like right in the middle of everything. <laughs> um, so I uh, I went to University of Rhode Island. Um, and while I was in pharmacy school, I went to a home novelty and adult, adult toy party. And I ended up becoming a salesperson doing it. Um, I, it was so much fun. And so I found myself talking to all women all the time about sexual health, what's going on with them. They just kind of opened up to me. So fast forward, when I had graduated from pharmacy school, I, um, I found this sex therapy program because I had moved down to Florida and it was a postgraduate certification course. And I was with OBGYNs and other therapists. And it was, I was the first pharmacist to graduate from the program. And it was cool because I could combine what I had really felt passionate about with my pharmacy degree. And I worked a lot in compounding pharmacies throughout South Florida, doing hormone replacement therapy, low libido medications, things like that. So it's a whole combination of everything. And now I love doing uh, my own consulting work. I am, I consider myself a coach, a sexual health coach for um, individuals, couples, all of that to help them with their, their sexual uh, health issues. So it's been great. <laughs> it's really, really fantastic. And just this need that I don't know why nobody talks about. Becoming pregnant for some women is super easy, for others, incredibly difficult. And it takes a toll mentally on your sex life, which physically can manifest, right? Then you become pregnant. Mm -hmm. Think about those nine months and the changes that happen to your body. How a woman feels through that time and postpartum. Why is nobody talking about how much sex? What is sex exactly? Is it sexual health? Is it intercourse? There's so much that goes into play, pun intended, <laughs> with this. <Yeah. laughs> and, then, uh, and then recovering from pregnancy, there's a long process. The only thing, and I'm a mom of three, the only thing I was ever told was after the baby was delivered was wait six weeks to have sex. What does that even mean? Sex is yeah. much more broad and vast. What would you tell a woman? Where do you begin with this topic? There's so much we could yeah. cover. And and I don't understand why it's not talked about more. I've read some um, biographies and autobiograph well, autobiographies from some women and articles from some women who about their sexual challenges postpartum. And I don't know why it's not talked about more with you know, and OBGYNs are so busy. They're like in and out with you. They may ask, okay, are you having sex or just wait till you, you know, six weeks after, you know, until you have sex then, okay, bye. And like, they're like, you're just like shoved out, you know, cause they, but they're, they're busy too. Like they have so many other things that they're trying to focus on too with, with your body and your, you know, postpartum and all that. So I don't fault them at all. It's just, 
we need an, an added piece of, of this added, you know, with postpartum, just like I believe that we need a lot. Uh, every woman should be assigned uh, a, a therapist postpartum to go, you know, as far as um, depression that they may get afterwards, you know, and, or anxiety or just anything to talk about. And I don't know why that's not just, just added on automatically. It should be, especially with, with this piece. And as far as waiting, you know, everyone's body is different. So it depends on if you've had a C-section or, or given vaginally uh, with the birthing process where your body takes all, you know, it takes different time times depending on the person for the body to heal. And so six weeks may not be enough time for a woman or, you know, maybe, you know, they're, they just feel really uncomfortable for a long amount of time. So the first thing um, I always, always tell patients is, you know, get clearance from your doctor first, like have your OBGYN visit, make sure everything, make sure that the parts are going to be okay to, <laughs> <laughs> to go back in, you know? So, so that's first and foremost, check with your OBGYN. Then after that, once you are okay, you've gotten the okay. Uh, I always recommend uh, to use a vibrator first, like just start becoming more in tune again with your body and how you're feeling before you even incorporate your partner in. Um, or if, if you don't have a partner, then that's an even more reason to, to do it, you know? So um, that's like first and foremost, and you'd be amazed how many women I've talked to who don't have a vibrator, never used one or didn't think to do that. Or, you know, because a lot of times they're like their husbands are, or significant others are in the mood and they're just not like their, their bodies are, it's like a roller coaster of hormones. You're up and down. There's all things going on. You're exhausted from having a newborn. You know, there's so many things that come into play. So I say, first and foremost, take care of you and start to explore your body and how you're feeling within yourself again, and use a vibrator first. You know, I mean, that's, that's my biggest piece first and foremost. You just touched on so many incredibly important points. This advice is something that I think that should be started much sooner in a woman's adult journey, right? Because we don't talk about things like I was saying, we don't talk about sex and pregnancy, but we also don't talk about how do we find pleasure with our body? So like I said earlier, sexual health and intercourse, you want to bridge, bridge the gap. So they're the same. So when you have that, so no one told me again, I, I, you know, I like to repeat this, go, why did nobody talk about this? All I knew was that when I got pregnant, I thought I'd be a little nauseous, maybe vomit once or twice. And then I would glow. I never glowed. Those who have probably heard my story many <laughs> times, I'll just keep it brief for those who haven't, because I had hyperemesis gravidarum mm. and just vomited the whole nine months. I did not want to be touched. Don't touch my skin. Sense, Ugh. smells, taste, everything just pu pushed me over the edge. My relationship really suffered during this time. I was so excited. As soon as I gave birth, I delivered the placenta. I felt like myself again. When mm -hmm. my body started healing, I'm like, oh, I could be intimate again. But what happened? And this is where I think the medical community failed me or I didn't know what questions to ask. I became like painfully dry and then when you um, ask, right? Okay, you go, oh, yes, you must yeah. hear this from so many women. Mm -hmm. I was breastfeeding. So I went from these this heightened sense of hormone levels over through all my senses over the top to just like, again, don't touch me, but for a different reason. So my mind was in the right place, but physically my body was like, no, it's not your time yet. And I would ask my doctor and they're like, oh, well, there's, I'm not, I'm not promoting any brands, but you know, the one that always comes mm -hmm. to mind, there's KY jelly, there's mm -hmm. KY jelly. There's mm -hmm. so much more to that. Let's get our retail pharmacists because we have every pharmacy has this huge section of sexual supportive products, right? Like, mm -hmm. where do you begin? I don't, not many people will come and say, hey, I'm postpartum. I want to start being intimate with my my significant other again. What from the aisle can you tell me about? I think all the years I was a retail pharmacist, nobody asked me that question. I would ask if something was painful, if it was normal or not. Um, mm -hmm. but, but not like, hey, we have all these pleasure aids sitting down here. What can we do? And, you know, gosh, there's so many places where retail pharmacists can help. Hospital pharmacists can help in this space too. You have women delivering babies in the hospital that's 
there's a, maybe a little push now back to home births or freestanding birthing centers, but the majority in the United States are delivering in a hospital. I wish now pharmacists, as we start to get involved in that space, let's add that to our postpartum and discharge conversations. And then like right. you said, Dr. A, let's get the conversation going. Once that mom is back home, let's get the mental health support. If they're suffering from de- postpartum depression, guarantee what's going to happen to their intimacy and their sexual health. Yeah. And I always like to stress the female sex organ is the brain. It starts here with us. So you have to get that back on track before you can get the rest of your body back on track. Also, that's first and foremost. So that's so, so important, especially if you're experiencing postpartum depression, you know, you're, you're not going to move forward if you can't, you know, if you're, if you're not feeling good, you know, mentally. So, you know, and then as far as being advocates for um, sexual health for for women postpartum, you know, as a pharmacist, you can create this role for yourself, especially if you're in an independent pharmacy, you can do whatever you want with this. And there's the sky's the limit. Like if, if I had my own independent pharmacy today, I would have a whole section that's out there dedicated, you know, they have the family planning aisle, but like for, for woman for like postpartum, like for all of that. And, you know, I would make myself known that I'm the, you know, the go-to person in that pharmacy to talk to. And, you know, I guarantee you get a lot more patients opening up. You'd get more foot traffic also, as far as getting more people in the door, because not everyone's going to feel comfortable going into a chain pharmacy, trying to figure out what lubricant to use. And some chains, you know, are, they are carrying vibrators, pelvic dilators, things like that. And, um, you know, why not have that in your independent pharmacy where it's a maybe, maybe feels a little more private for, for people to talk about it. You know, I you love, a sorry, go ahead. no, I you're lo- fine. Yeah. yeah. I love this idea. A hot topic in our profession is how can we increase revenue in our independent pharmacies? And there's so many reasons, you know, that this has happened in the United States with reimbursements and, you know, different Mm -hmm. fees involved. And in my opinion, collusion, not part of this topic, but well, here we have an amazing topic here, ways to create revenue for independent pharmacies. The first thing I'm going to circle back to what you told me in the beginning of our conversation, you started selling products for intimacy, right? To increase Mm -hmm. pleasure. I, for a very long time in my younger adult life, was a Marine Corps spouse. This was a thing. Marine Corps spouses are always looking for ways to earn incomes. I will age myself. This was prior to what we have with smartphones and media today and social media. So there weren't a lot of uh, revenue streams for military spouses who moved all the time. And mm-hmm. this this is one of the, and I don't remember the name of the company, if it was the same when you worked for or not, but when a friend of mine started selling these products and I went to her house to learn about them, I was like, I didn't know this existed. <laughs> you know, so for yeah. me, you, I am so impressed. So becoming comfortable talking about products to improve sexual health, increase pleasure and in intercourse, you know, that's a first milestone. I have a feeling many pharmacists are not comfortable talking about this as nor are the patients, right? You have this partner. I grew up in an area, this era that this is private. This is kept between you and your partner. At Mm -hmm. some point though, you want to talk to a medical professional. You mentioned postpartum. If you see your doctor at that six week window, you get one visit you may never see your doctor again. A lot of women yeah. don't. It's the pediatrician. You're always bringing your newborn to see that doctor on those scheduled visits. But these guidelines go back decades and don't have a whole lot of merit. Just like you said, everyone's body is different. I know our community, we practice personalized medicine, and this is that perfect place. So become comfortable. My goal is for every retail pharmacist and all of us as a society to become comfortable talking about sexual health, sexual pleasure, and having those conversations with somebody like a retail pharmacist. And it doesn't matter who's standing around, but if you want a private space, know that you could say, hey, can I can I speak to you over at that consultation window or off to the side? Yeah. So you joined this company. Was there anything that sparked you to say, this is what I want to do or to become comfortable talking to your, your friends, your family, to strangers about this? 
you know, I don't know what it is. It just clicked for me. And, and I just, I saw a need, I saw a need for it for women. Um, and because I saw a need for it, I wanted to talk more about it with people and help them and help, you know, and help them out, you know, as far as, as far as that goes. And then, you know, I got into more of the medication side of it when I was doing compounding pharmacy and having those conversations. I, I feel like if you, if you are comfortable talking about it, then they're going to be comfortable talking about it. You know, if you're not like squirmish about it, and I know it's hard for some, you know, healthcare professionals or just anybody to talk about these things they seem as taboo, but that's why we need more of a, of a need for it. I think I've always just been like the black sheep of my family <laughs> where I like to talk about the things that people may be uncomfortable talking about. Cause I just like to keep conversations open, you know, and in honest. So, yeah. But I think, you know, as far as like pharmacists go, this is a great opportunity for you to connect with patients. I mean, there's just, there's a lot of, um, there might be concern for women postpartum, you know, she's breastfeeding and she's worried about what lubricant to use. Is it going to affect the breastfeeding? Like just a lot of things like that, you know, and what type of lube to lubricant to pick out, you know, and there's like just so many little questions like that, that can and there's occur. A yeah. And there's a lot more over the counter now than there was 20 mm -hmm. years ago. So mm -hmm. there's the gel based and water based. And mm -hmm. where can our, our pharmacists go to learn more about these different products? Should they just walk the aisle? Are there any online resources? Yeah. So they can go on. I mean, I actually created a little tutorial. Um, it's on my YouTube channel and in my, my, on my website, because I, there isn't anything there. You can find articles that other people have written. So you could just literally Google it and say, what are the types of lubricant and, you know, and what are the differences? And, and it'll take you through, you know, water-based versus silicone. They have CBD infused lubricants now. So um, it's more just self-education, but that would be, you know, that would be great if we had more people talking about that. So it's just, it's just something that we know, <laughs> you know, so. I know it's I've been asked many random questions like about using, I mean, just coconut oil like this. Can I use this? Can I use olive oil? I've been asked many different questions. Absolutely. And you have the answers. Most of us do not. So this is fantastic. So I'll just say right now, then how do we find your YouTube channel? What are we yeah, Googling? So I have... Um, and I'll make sure this is in the, the show notes too. Um, I have drnadia.org and that's the dot com was taken. So <laughs> I have my website there. Everything's on there. Um, and then um, as far as like the blog and then my YouTube channel is Ask Dr. A. Um, and then I'm part of, you know, this pharmacy podcast network with the podcast Sex Farm D. Um, so everything will be on there. And I have an Instagram also sex farm D. So I talk about all that, um, on that podcast also, because, you know, we don't have enough resources out there to talk about it. Which is why I was so excited to find you and bring you on. So I have a lot of questions for yeah. you here. Okay. This, somebody asked me, mm -hmm. does having sex induce labor? And I thought it was the orgasm itself Tell me what we, we should know about this. So this is very interesting. So, you know, you could say it's an old wives tale. Um, so oxytocin is released during, um, it stimulates the uterine contractions in childbirth and lactation after childbirth. So, you know, they've used that to induce labor and um, oxytocin, we call also call the love drug, which is that increases um, like the sex drive in people. Um, it's produced in the hypothalamus actually, and it's released into the bloodstream by the pituitary gland. And um, some of us have heard it as the love hormone, the bond hormone. It can be released not only during, during sexual intercourse, but like sometimes it's released during with it's coincides with endorphin release and things like that. Um, and I actually love, it's actually compounded as a peptide and I love it for people who have low libido. Um, they, it, the intranasal spray is the most common. 
and it's used for people with low libido also. So that's, I think, that whole connection with that. So it's actually oxytocin. And that's that component that they're they're talking about. You know, I don't think there wouldn't be enough of it released, I don't think, you know, to induce labor, unless maybe you're so close to giving birth. <laughs> but um, but yeah, so and it and it it honestly can affect your overall mental health with just like relaxation, um, you know, just feeling that that um it's kind of like an endorphin release if you were to or serotonin, if you were to like, think of it that way. So I think that's where that comes from. And I love that question. <laughs> There's so many more, right? Oh my gosh, yeah. this is such great information that people don't know. And I think a lot, I didn't know, a lot of pharmacists don't know that you can get this in a nasal form. You can get mm -hmm. this in other forms. So would they go and ask which doctor, would it be an OBGYN? Would it be their primary care? Would it be, and I guess it de depends at what point are they trying to become pregnant and they just don't, they're not in the mood, you know, is that low libido? Okay. So let me ask you this question. How do you know if your libido is low? What's a normal amount of time? Like you said earlier, this starts in the mind when people meet each other and start dating and are excited mm -hmm. to see each other, right? We talk about pheromones and you just mentioned the love drug and these other hormones, oxy, you know, oxytocin and serotonin and all the way our body produces these chemicals. Wow. So how do we know at what point? Normally it's later after you've delivered or a lot of couples, you have more than one child, you're exhausted, you're working full time, right. not to do necessarily with maternal health, but I have a lot of friends or you'll see a lot on these Facebook groups of women. Oh, I don't want to be intimate with my spouse. And you hear mm -hmm. a lot of one, whether it's the husband or wife or however your partnership is defined. Oh, I don't want to be, I don't want, I, I am not in the mood. Yeah, I'm not in the mood. It's a very deep question. I don't want to delve into that today. But how would you know if your libido is low, say postpartum, when should mm. it resume? When would you want to go talk? Okay, so which doctor do you want to see? And how do you get a prescription for something like that? Yeah, great question. So, and again, you know, I want to just just circle back quick to the oxytocin. I, I wouldn't, I mean, usually it's not used during pregnancy. That would be something that you'd have a conversation to have with your doctor or if you're breastfeeding, but it's great for low libido. Um, to get a prescription for something like that. Like, so for women, it's more how we're feeling, um, not necessarily other things. However, I always say the first question I ask my patient, my female patients, when they say they're, they don't feel like, you know, having sex or their libido is low is, have you had your hormones checked? Have you had your thyroid checked? Have you had your cholesterol checked? That can cause low libido. So like just the first, first and foremost, connect with your, primary care, usually an OBGYN is doing the hormone panel, connect with them first, get that all done to see what your, what your levels are, because that can affect it. Number two, if they're, if they are all, you know, all normal within range, um, an OBGYN, it depends on what state you're in. I'm in South Florida. We, there, there's a lot of, um, hormone replacement therapy or just clinics that do, that do more with low libido. Um, some doctors are more conservative than others. So if your OBGYN is not one to prescribe something for low libido, um, so for example, there's a, an FDA approved drug out there called Vilesi. It's also, a, it's a peptide and that is for low libido in women. So there are actually, you know, FDA approved and drugs out there, but again, some OBGYNs may be more conservative with it. So your best bet also is to look online, don't go with, you know, there's a lot of bogus telehealth companies out there. Make sure that you're seeing someone in person or you know where the clinic is located, but you can look up, um, you know, clinics for that specialize in like hormone replacement therapy. Any doctor that's doing that would most likely be doing the low libido drugs. Um, for males, it's a little easier. Um, for example, if they have erectile dysfunction, a lot of times they can you know, go to their primary care doctor. Again, get your all your blood work done. Testosterone, uh, low testosterone usually coincides with low libido for men. Um, so that's an easy fix if they're going to go on testosterone therapy or if they're going on something for erectile dysfunction. Um, but women are a little more trickier for sure. And there could be some mental things going on, you know, mentally where, you know, they if they have a therapist or they should seek a therapist um, just to 
just to kind of get a handle on what what's going on also, you know, mentally. Just incredible. There's so much information to unpack. So mm -hmm. we have so many clinical pearls. I would love to review, but I want to pull it back in. So mm -hmm. bring it just back to women, to maternal mm -hmm. health. Mm -hmm. So assuming you've been, you've become pregnant, you go through this nine months, how much, how much intimacy, I will phrase it that way, is normal or healthy through uh, the nine months of pregnancy, because I had mentioned, right, I was so mm -hmm. ill. I didn't need, don't even touch me. Don't, I don't want to mm -hmm. smell anything like lock me in a little closet with no lights and no smells and no sounds. That's, that's how I was. That's not reality either, but that's how I wish I could be. And now I was postpartum and I'm like, okay, let's yeah. get back to normal. But that, that year I was breastfeeding then, of course, we have these changes that we discussed. How much intimacy, if you have a healthy pregnancy, not like mine, would be, is there a normal amount? Obviously, it's different for everybody. A lot of women are like, oh, gosh, my spouse still wants this and or I want it. My hormones are off the charts. And like, I, oh, my gosh, you hear all ranges. Any advice or feedback for women on what, what's a normal, healthy yeah. pregnancy? So it really depends on how you're feeling, first and foremost. Um, and it depends on what you what works for you. Some couples. Um, one time, you know, being intimate one day a week works for them. Some people it's three days a week. So everybody's different. So it's really debate based on how you're feeling. Um, but it is important to still be maintaining a healthy sex life with your partner, um, on an intimate level. One thing I recommend for women, um, either during or after pregnancy, I'm big with, it's called sensei touch. And that's a big form of intimacy. Um, and it's actual, it's actually non, it's a non intercourse intimacy where it's all touch. So an exercise I like to give couples are, um, for women, especially that have just given birth, um, to, you know, any type of massage, um, anything like that, where it's, where it's touch, um, just to make you feel good in your body again, because a lot of women are self-conscious also about like their C-section scar, or they've put on weight. And that's so important to just feel that touch from their partner and be comfortable being, you know, naked with their partner again. Like that's a big one. Um, and then like you were saying where you had sensitivity to light and smell. So I actually have exercises for, for a uh, woman where um, they, they hone in on what their top from each sense, like what's your favorite smell? What's your favorite taste? what's your favorite thing to listen to that's relaxing? Maybe it's the sound of waves crashing and then incorporate that. So while your partner is massaging you, maybe light that lavender candle that is just so, so relaxing for you or play that soothing music. And that's all really important with, with getting back into your body um, during and after pregnancy. This advice is so important Let's recap here because I want to make sure everyone understands. So starting with touch, right? One of the basic principles of being human humanity, how it feels. And when you have a partner you can share that with, when you've gone through an experience like becoming pregnant, delivering a baby, growing your family to regain that connection that you had when you were younger. And mm -hmm. for women, you hit a really important point. Our bodies have changed so much. We live in a society where media is showing us this perfect Barbie doll-like female, which is not our reality, nor should it be, right? right? But as when we compare ourselves often to our younger self, we are no longer that younger self. We have a new body and becoming important in our new skin is just vital as we age and get older, it's going to be a, just a journey of our body continuing to change. So start with that touch, regain that intimacy. Mm -hmm. I said earlier, there's sexual health and there's intercourse. And we want to make that where intercourse is pleasure, starting with touch, that connection. What you just said is so fundamental. And you have exercises to get you there. Start there. You mentioned vibrators for somebody who's never used a vibrator. You see these pictures of them and, or you go into store and it's like these shapes and mm -hmm. sizes. And what are we looking at there? Where would you begin if somebody says, you know what? Maybe intercourse is still a little painful because of my hormone levels. While we work on that, 
you said start with a vibrator. Where do you begin? How do you choose one? Do we have time? We have one minute. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. So with some of my, so with some of my patients, I have a couple of websites that I like. Um, some some products that I like in particular. I always say too, if you can have, if you're able to have a home party, that's a really fun thing to do, and it's very important to be able to hold a, that toy, that vibrator, in your hand to see what the settings are, the vibrations, what the shape, the feel, very important. If you're going into a retail pharmacy, you just get a box, right? You can't really <laughs> like hold it in your hand. Some um, some toys, some adult toy stores do have the product outside of the box where you can hold onto it and feel it. Um, so if there's one in your area that you like, you know, that you know of, go ahead in there. But some people feel like really scared to go in themselves, bring a girlfriend with you if you need, you know, just for fun. Um, but if you can have like a little, uh, a, a home party, that's great. Cause then you're in the privacy of your own home. Um, and everybody's different with what they, what they, you know, like, as far as like what kind of stimulation they like. Um, and so as far as that goes, you know, and Hey, if you're an independent pharmacy owner, you should do that. You should have the, you know, the product, but then have one that's outside of the box. So someone can actually like feel, you know, feel or touch, even if you want to have it behind a case and then you can grab it for someone that's like really powerful to be able to have that in your store, you know? So uh, I, I'm, yeah, sorry. <laughs> no, I'm you're fine. Sorry. Absolutely. And then you can get people talking about it. They go, mm -hmm. I'm sure how many people come go, oh my gosh, I've never seen that before. And when they see the price, right? Reasonable, mm -hmm. nothing compared to what medication, a lot of medications will yeah. cost and something to get that connection happening again with your spouse while you recover from pregnancy. You have a newborn, you have a new life and make mm -hmm. this journey part of your new life. Become comfortable with your body, become comfortable talking about sex toys, become comfortable talking to your pharmacist for the patients and for pharmacists, make this a conversation. When those moms and or significant others come in for those postpartum medications for breastfeeding advice, ask them, ask them these questions. Mm -hmm. Do you know, point them to that aisle, make suggestions, talk about yeah. the lubricants and get that connection. We'll have a happier society all around, right? I know. <laughs> and for people. women postpartum, this is so important for, for them to you know, to be able to do this, you know? And if you're not, seek that help, that advice. Dr. A, you are here for all of us, pharmacists and patients. And I just mm -hmm. want to thank you so much. Please, everyone, go to her blog, her YouTube channel, <laughs> seek help, talk to your doctors, whichever one you get into first. Get the hormone testing done if you feel that you might have low libido. Mm -hmm. Get your spouse the help if you mm -hmm. think there's something missing there. Find ways that make you comfortable to reconnect with your partner and get intimacy going again. Dr. A, thank you so much. Any last words, final advice? No, well, you know, thanks so much for having me again. And my biggest piece of advice for all my female patients, pregnant, not pregnant, postpartum, get yourself a good toy. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody get yourself a good toy. Get yourself a and good toy. <laughs> you're an independent pharmacy. That is your new slogan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right in the front of the store, point into the aisle. Here we go. Amazing. <laughs> nice way to start the next journey chapter in your life with a new baby. And yeah. we're all here to support everybody to get their connection with their partners going again. Thank you, Dr. A. And Thank for so everyone much. listening, my goodness, my pleasure. We need to continue this conversation. It doesn't stop here, right? You work we, as in your introduction, so many other areas of sexual health. We'll have future conversations on this, but right now Maternal Rx is our place here. And I just want to, again, thank you. If you found this valuable, please like us online and share with your friends and colleagues. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. Bye.